Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Pages Through the Ages. So today's book I want to talk about is First I Killed My Father by Long Yuong. I don't know if I've pronounced that right. So basically this is a memoir of this lady's experience at the time of the Cambodian genocide that happened in the 1970s. I recently went to Cambodia this year. Um, and I learned an awful lot about the genocide. Obviously, there's still a lot that I still need to know because it was one of those areas of history where I didn't actually have any information about. I didn't actually know anything about it. When I think of the 70s, I think of the Vietnam War. That's the most that I thought of. I didn't know about the Cambodian genocide. Um, but since going to Cambodia, I feel that it's something I want to look into more. But I picked up this book when I was in the airport when I was coming home. And I was just, I just felt so compelled to buy it, to read it, and to basically learn more about that. So basically, it comes from the point of view as of her from a child, as a child, because basically when this all happened, she was about five years old when it all happened, and she even says at the back in like the notes that the reason why she did it from a child's perspective rather than an adult's perspective is because she was a child when she experienced it, and she says about how. Older generations around her would always say, oh, weren't she lucky because she was so young, she will forget about it and move on with her life and all be grand and stuff. But that's not the case. Just because she was young doesn't mean she didn't feel and hurt and was terrified, just like everybody else, basically. Um, and that's another reason why she decided to write this, is to bring that across by going, yes, I may have been a kid, but I still experienced it and it still scared me and it still hurt me and still I lost people just like everybody else. Um, so I find this a very, I found it a very powerful book. Um, it's, it is very interesting. So what happened was she was from a middle class family and when the Khmer Rouge came into her city, which was Phnom Penh, which is one of the main capitals um, of Cambodia, that was the main city that she was living in at the time, so the Cameron Rouge come into her city and she even says there's like a line here where I was cheering for them only moments ago and now I'm scared of them. Meaning that when they first came back, the Cameron Rouge, um, everybody rejoiced and cheered about it. And that literally changed within a matter of minutes, if that. Suddenly everybody was packing their stuff, they were running, they were trying to make sure that they got out and that all would be well. So basically what happened was the idea was to Basically, Cambodia is a communist country and the idea behind it all was they wanted everybody to be on a level playing field and they wanted everybody to everybody and they wanted everybody to start off as farmers again, that farming was the way forward and that everybody everybody had to be a farmer and that there would be no hierarchy or anything like that. It's a stupid system because obviously there was a hierarchy, there was people that were in charge of this stuff regardless. Um, but it's all about control and stuff. So her family flee the city and they go from village to village to village pretending that they are poorer than who poorer than what they are pretending they don't have an education or anything like that they pretend that they have been farmers all their lives and so you basically go through the years and her experiences with losing family members so what happened with some of the family members is her eldest brothers they went off to one camp her eldest sister went off to another camp um, and she stayed with her dad and her mum and her younger siblings um, in this other little village. The first person to die, it's very interesting that the title says first I killed my father because the first person to die was actually her eldest sister um, and then her father and then her mother and her little sister unfortunately. They were a family of seven, eight, nine originally and they lost four people from that family. And it's just, it's, just it's, it's a horrible story and I can't believe that this actually happened. And it happened in people's lifetime as well because it was only in the 70s, you know, it wasn't that long ago. And even into the early years of the 90s in my own, gen um, my own lifetime, Cambodia was still trying to fix its, you know, pick itself back up from all this. 
and education today still isn't that big of an importance because back then when this genocide was happening anybody who had an education so if you were a mechanic a teacher a doctor um a lawyer anything like that you were a target and you would instantly be killed for that and even if you weren't educated but you had glasses for example you'd be killed as well because the idea of you wearing glasses meant that you were educated and the reason why they were killing the educated ones is because the educated ones are the ones that can fight back they'll question and they're the ones who will cause an uprise and obviously you don't want that um so it was a very i can't imagine what it would have been like to have gone through that but i'm so glad that i was able to learn about it now and I was able to read about it. So when I went to Cambodia, I went to the Killing Fields, um, and I also went to a museum they had there, which was actually a school turned into a prison slash torture camp, and now it's turned into a museum to show you what happened. And there was a, a couple of survivors there as well. What happened to her is she goes from village to village, then her mum makes her and her two of her siblings leave that village, to then go off because in her head she said and it makes sense as well if they come after us they can't get us all basically so she sent them, sent them off and she ends up going into a child soldier camp um but i don't want to give more away i feel like i've given most of the story away but basically i would recommend reading this or at least another book around this time because there are a fair few books from the survivors everybody's story is unique but a lot of them have obviously the same similarities of the same events that were happening um so i would definitely recommend if you want to know anything about the cambodian genocide i definitely recommend then you pick up one of the books if not multiple books i've got a few more books on that on the topic um to lo look into as well there's also been turned into a netflix uh film as well um i don't know if it's available in all netflix I've, I'm not too sure if it's just available in English speaking Netflixes, I don't know, um, I haven't actually had a chance to look out for it myself but it's also on Netflix if you wanted to watch it. But yeah, so First I Killed My Father, I would definitely recommend reading this, it, it just pulls at the heartstrings and it just, I would just definitely recommend reading it, it's something, to, it makes you more humble, it makes you learn more and stuff so I would definitely recommend reading this book if you get a chance to. So that is what I have read recently. Thank you for checking out this video. Please do leave a comment down below if you've read this book or if you've read books similar to this. And I'll see you again in another video very soon. Bye guys.